within an hour, I can be in from my house, be in Yellowstone Park, and start seeing wolves and bears and bison and these terrific things. Where I want to go, what I want to look for, is driven by the weather, the light, the seasonal location and behavior of the animals. You know, wild places are, are wild because they're so remote. Well, Yellowstone is not really remote, but yet it's still wild. Oh, good old. They're surprisingly quiet for something that weighs a ton. Oh, tap, tap, tap with their toes. I still don't know how to make a living at this. I'm still mostly just shoot what I like and uh, try to do something with it later. I don't like assignments. Usually what I get them is, is interesting stuff, but it may not fit their storyboard that they planned. And uh, when I come back, you know, light wasn't good, I wasn't, you know, this stuff didn't happen, and somehow that becomes my fault. So I just assume I have to deal with that. Hello again. Uh, I have a cook. Bear three. That's three. Yeah. She's been sleeping very long. Huh? She's been sleeping very long. No, not not too long. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's a little activity, but I'd like to get her out in this grassland here. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. See what you can do. I guess I'd like to do is get out here and, and just kind of watch her for a little bit. So right now they're not only they're not necessarily too far away, but it's too busy. Uh, again, if I want to get a bear picture, why that's <clears throat> there's a bear down there, but wait until it cleans up and get out into the grass. And the light's pretty nice. There's a little high thin clouds. The key is to be trying to anticipate where they might go and then be ready when they if they show up there. You increase your odds if you understand them a little bit, but I get a lot of dead ends too. I think in terms of my maximizing my day here, I'm gonna go up and look for some bison calves. She's gonna stay in that timber way. That'll be very satisfactory. Yellowstone Park has the only location where a herd of wild bison has lived continuously for the last half a million years. They're doing really well here, and when you get more and more individuals that are mobile, they're going to walk out of the park, and uh, Montana specifically doesn't want them out of the park. And if the bison move in and start occupying that land, they can't put as many cattle in there. Bison are one of my top 10 favorite animals ever. And uh, so I have a strong bias for them, but it's a symbol of the American West. And if you put it to the public, do you want bison on your, your public land or do you want somebody's cows on your public land? I think the bison would win. Yellowstone Park lost the lawsuit and they're required to kill them and not let them go into Montana. Pronghorn are silly sometimes. Now what's curious about them is they, they probably won't run that far. They'll probably stay in sight of us the whole time. But. It's kind of a cool shot with the four of them and that bison on the top. And since I probably already have 25,000 bison photographs, probably mostly what I'm after would be the little, the little babies. If you're a legitimate wildlife photographer or nature photographer, 
You spend time probably every year in Yellowstone Park. The lower falls of the Yellowstone, it's photographed you know, 40,000 times a day. And <clears throat> so when you show up there, I want to get something unique, why it's going to be kind of hard. But you can easily get off the road and it's wild. It's basically your park. What I need to do is get something different and hopefully better. And what that means oftentimes is going places that other people don't go. We came from wildland, and not that long ago. If we can maintain this wild place with you know, all this you know, bird life, wolves, wild, clean water, we can learn a lot. 